SnapDeck IT is the expert go-to resource for all things CMMC. Education, certification, preparation, and ongoing managed IT. Manage, secure, grow. Check it out at snaptechit.com. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of 123 CMMC. My name is Dana Mantilla, and I will be your host. And today we have Sean Brown from SnapTech IT. Hello, Sean. How are you? Hey, Dana. I'm doing good. Doing good. Good. So usually we have your counterpart on here, Carl, but now today we get you. You know, we let him take a vacation, so <laughs> you get uh, you get stuck with me today. Perfect. Perfect. So let's tell everybody what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about password policies for CMMC. Yeah, everybody's favorite topic. Exactly. I, we're just chomping at the bit to see this one. <laughs> All right. So what are CMMC requirements for password policies? You know, specifically, CMMC doesn't really have a requirement for password policy. So it, um, it really depends on your organization and your policy that you set. So... One of the recommendations we have is just to follow the NIST password policy and their recommendations for passwords. So that's what we recommend to our clients. All right. So our next question ties right into that. So what are some of the NIST guidelines? What do they say you should be doing? Yeah. So NIST recommends that you at least do eight characters long. Um, they've got a whole list. There's a whole document that you can go look at. But eight characters, I personally like to see that more around 12 to 15 Um Multi-factor authentication is a big thing when we're talking about passwords. So if you have an opportunity to put multi-factor authentication on it, you know, we highly recommend that you do that as well. One of the big changes that NIST made, and this kind of shocked me and I think shocked a lot of people, is they removed the, um, the time frame to reset a password. And so their logic behind it is instead of uh, forcing people to change their password every 30 days or 60 days or 90 days like we've had in the past, what that led to was just more insecure passwords because people either tried to reuse passwords or they would use the same ones in a lot of different places. Um, now the recommendation is at least change it annually or if there's been a situation where you think your password may have been compromised. And instead, go more longer passphrases um, and still add your complexity. You know, they still want to see uppercase, lowercase. If you can mix in a special character here and there, um, that's always good. Some of the other things that, you know, was kind of recommended too is make sure you've got good, you know, account lockout policies in place that kind of don't really relate directly to the actual password complexity, but are also really important and limit the number of password attempts that are kind of allowed before that lockout policy occurs. That is good. And then I always say, too, make sure you're not using the same password for everything. That's exactly right. Yeah. We talk about that all the time. And we we still see that occasionally with some of our clients. You know, you've got mm -hmm. people that are using multiple passwords um, across different platforms. And mm -hmm. so that's yeah. a that's a no, no these days. I run into that all the time. And then people yeah. say, oh, but it's just so hard to remember different ones. Yeah. Well, you know, my recommendation is come up with a great passphrase that you can change a lot. And so um, I like to use kind of a, a mantra or you can come up with a goal, for example, like um, it's in, we're in the middle of college football season. So as an example, um, you could use a passphrase, something to the similar, like, uh, you know, Georgia Bulldogs are the best team in college football as an example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. Well, that's good. I think, I think that that's good. And I also tell them too, sometimes you can make it so that if you have a phrase and the word that you're inserting in the phrase to differentiate is something that you're going to remember, like, let's say you're logging into your, you know, Citibank credit card or your a social media account, you can put something in there that's specific to that. So now you're only remembering the phrase. And then the only thing you have to really, oh, you know, think about when you're logging into that account is that one little part. Yeah, that's a great, great, uh, great, um, tip there as well. Absolutely. Yes. yes. And everybody's going to be all secure with their passwords after this. Yeah. Let's right. hope so. So what are ways that you can fail certification if they don't have a policy? So how can you fail? Well, you know, step one is if you don't have a policy, you're, you're sure to fail. Um, another thing is if you've got a policy that's written, but your configuration of your passwords don't match your policy. So if, um, 
you know, if your policy says, hey, you know, you've got to have at least a 12 character long and it's got to have this complexity. If I go look at your password configuration and you're set to eight characters and no complexity and you don't have to, you know, it's not remembering any previous passwords. That's a that's a surefire way to uh, to raise a red flag in uh, during your audit. Absolutely. And that's one thing too. I say, you know, when people are like, okay, we're going to write all our policies down, which that's great. But then you have to make sure, like you just said, you have to make sure you're actually doing these things because this again is not a check the box. Okay, we got the written form down. This is a no. We wrote it down, and now we're actually following it. So that if someone does check like that, says twelve characters, you're using twelve characters. So that's right. So make sure your policy matches what you're doing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. So why are password managers a more secure option for managing your passwords? Well, typically, if you're using a password manager, you really only have to remember one password, which is great, right? Hopefully, you'll make that really complex and a long passphrase to get into that because that uh, that password manager controls a lot of your passwords. Um, you know, shameless plug, I've been using LastPass for, for many, many years now. Um, and some of the advantages that I have is I can create very long, complex, you know, 20 plus character, 30 plus character passwords that I don't have to remember, you know, LastPass will do that for me or any of the password kind of management tools will do that for you. Um, so you can have different passwords across a lot of different platforms and a lot of different uh, systems that are all highly complex that you don't even know and you don't need to know them. <laughs> Which is even better, right? Which is even better. That's right. Okay, so what about the DOD subcontractors? What do they need to think about when they're implementing a password policy? Yeah, um, my recommendation is find something that works for your organization, right? We don't want things to be so overly complicated uh, that your users will just get frustrated uh, and start reusing passwords all over the place. We don't want that. But we also don't want it so weak that you're not secure. So find a middle ground that works for you um, do training for your for your team. Make sure that they understand uh, good password management and how to how to use a tool like LastPass or one of the password vaults, and then how to create you know kind of complex passphrases, kind of like what we were talking about. So find something that works for you. Make sure that it's usable for for your organization. And you know, I was just thinking about that might be a good employee benefit. Maybe you can you can sign up your employees and give them a LastPass account or, or something like that. So that way, you know, they can use it for their personal passwords as well. But so that's the benefit part of it. But you also know now that your work you know, passwords are going to be secure. So that might be we good. do. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. We do that internally as well. So we leverage it, and then they're able to use it for personal as well. Yeah, because so. they're not very expensive, and for the value of those passwords, you know, versus what the cost is of this. Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. You, I was I was skeptical about using a tool like that. Um, but years ago, I was at a security conference and one of the presenters you know, was logging into a system and broke out his his last pass. And I was like, OK, well, I guess if it's good enough for him, it's probably good enough for me, too. So, yeah, they are a little intimidating because you're thinking, OK, I'm putting all of my most you know sensitive information in here. So now what if somebody can hack into there and get it, you know? Well, make sure you set up 2FA on that password manager as well. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Good point. That's right. All right. So that this was great. Oh, we had a lot of good good stuff here. Is there anything you want to throw out there before we go? Yeah. So um, like anything with CMMC, I, I would just encourage people to treat it as a journey. This is not something that you're going to do in a month or two or you know even a year. I mean, this will be a multi-year process for some organizations, depending on kind of where you're at in your journey and where you're starting and where you're going to, what level of CMMC certification you need to get to. Um, you know, I would recommend you work with a, a registered provider organization. And really that kind of first step is um, talk to a registered provider organization and do kind of a gap analysis. Figure out kind of where you're at, where your starting point is and where your gaps are. So that you can understand just how much do I need to get done and what kind of time frame can we can we build kind of an IT roadmap to get us from where we're at to where we want to be. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent idea, because if you don't have a map, you really don't know how far down the journey you are and where the endpoint is and what you need to do to get there. So, that's yeah, stuff. that's exactly right. Good stuff. All right. Well, thank you very, very much. I appreciate all your time and your excellent input. 
and I'm glad we got to see you. Maybe we'll have one where we actually have you and Carl on there together. That would be nice. Yeah, absolutely. We'll look forward to it. All right, great. Well, thank you again for your time and thank you everybody for watching and we hope to see you on the next episode of 123 CMMC. Bye-bye. Right. See ya. Take care. Snapdeck IT is the expert go-to resource for all things CMMC. Education, certification, preparation, and ongoing managed IT. Manage, secure, grow. Check it out at snaptechit.com.